So we've been living in the bus now for about a year and a half. Believe it or not. And we wanted to share with you some of the realities of living in the bus because social media has really made it look idealized it. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to kind of share with you the real side of living in a nomadic life versus what is being shared on social media. Yeah, so. and I think we all have a tendency to idealize and think about what the best aspects will be and the most amazing parts will be. And there are amazing parts, but when you're just daydreaming about it, you just aren't familiar with the realities yet. So that's what we want to share with you. Exactly. <laughs> I think personally the most in your face thing that you're going to deal with the most in bus life is your utilities and by that we'd be covering like power water propane trash fuel dumping your toilet things that you're going to be dealing with very very often probably on a daily basis and are the most noticeable aspect of living right that you're not used to having to deal with we live in a society where we don't have to deal with our own sewage we push a little lever and it gets whisked away from us and we never have to see it again but when you live a nomadic lifestyle like this and you have a composting toilet you're absolutely dealing with your own sewage in one way when you have to dump your black tanks and in another way when you have to dump your composting toilet and you might be using a jug on your composting toilet for the urine as well and that has to be dumped too right and in our case we actually have like a, a gray tank underneath our bus but with that it fills up and it's not like it's just going down the drain into you know the sewer all the time right. we have to physically go do something about that when it gets full that's just one aspect of your utilities yeah. here's some more <laughs> okay starting at the top power power is something that you may or may not constantly be dealing with in our case we have a lot of solar and we have a lot of batteries and so for the most part it's something we don't have to uh, worry about worry about all the time but sometimes uh you have a cloudy day or, or two several, or several right? or more and now you're dealing with having to use your generator to keep the power on and if you don't have a generator you're going to be dealing with not using your electronics and just struggling to get your batteries up to a level so you may be able to charge a laptop or or your cell phone or something like that so you, and then you're going to worry about like if it discharges too far you're going to be damaging your batteries and that's going to be a very expensive mistake yeah so power and can i add if please. you're cooking on an induction stove or some kind of electric cooktop you can't cook now on cloudy cold days when you really want something warm for dinner yes and that's huge that's, that's huge and so like that's why we went with propane instead of some other kind of of heating source yes. for cooking because you know it's something that we don't have to rely on sun right we can cook and bake no matter what the weather right but then that takes us to our next power thing propane you know in our case we have two propane tanks and a five gallon just a single five gallon propane tank can actually carry you quite some time right but you might have a propane fired refrigerator which sounds silly but it's something that's normal and that's, that'll last you about a month if you don't use any other propane um, but then you're cooking and if you have a hot water heater that's propane fired you're using these things constantly and so you're that's something that you know you're gonna check and there are devices you can get that can measure the amount of, of propane in your tank but it's not mm -hmm. common to have that most people just kind of go out and rattle their tank to see how much they have in there. which means you might run out of propane right in the middle of who knows what yeah which has happened so it, you just have finite resources in your bus and everything is finite in your bus. Everything. everything runs out. So everything will run out. So that's just another thing that we commonly have to deal with. Um, the next one, water. Water's huge. It's like 
and this is something that you wouldn't believe how fast you're going to go through, especially if you're showering in your bus or your van or whatever. You know, we've talked to people that have uh, smaller vehicles, and they commonly bring up how what a bummer it is to have only 30 or 40 gallons of water. Some people are like, oh, we just had 20. We didn't even think we'd be using it that fast. And yeah. Gone. Yeah. Gone. You're making coffee. You're drinking it. You're showering with it. You're washing your dishes with it. You're washing your hands with it constantly. And, you know, every time you're doing something on the bus that's dirty, boom, you're in there washing your hands, using a little bit more of that water. And you think, oh, I just turned it on for a second. Next thing you know, you have 10 gallons left. Yeah. Or five or none. You ran out and you're like, oh, man, is the pump just running yeah. back there? Yeah. So. And if you're trying to boondock, boondock for a long period of time, you really don't want that happening. You want that water to carry you as long as possible. Right. So, but the reality is, is it doesn't matter how much water you have in your vehicle you're going to have to go and replace that every once in a while and hopefully it's on days that you're moving but the reality is because that's what this video is about that finite resource goes quick and uh, so be ready for that you yeah. might find yourself having to move because of your need for water or something else exactly when exactly. you really weren't ready to move yet right uh next point trash yeah it is so inconvenient you don't realize how much trash you make in your ordinary life when all you have to do is take that bag out of the trash can and go dump it out at the curb. But man, it becomes unreal when you have to find somewhere to throw away your trash. Every time we're like, how did that bag get full so fast? We have to stop filling up this trash bag so fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, an issue. And it's convenient. It's, it's more convenient for us because we have a tow vehicle to take our trash out versus right. like, if you have to pack up pack up your entire vehicle just to drive your bus over to a trash can because now you have two bags because you know <laughs> yeah you had to take one you didn't bag want to out take and it, put but a now, new bag in and, and we're gonna put yeah. that bag <laughs> exactly you know trash you have now you have two issue. full 30 gallon trash bags sitting somewhere in your house not outside because there's animals where you live now that you're unaware of yep. you're in some place you've never seen there's raccoons and wild dogs and coyotes, coyotes and all sorts of things so you can't just set it outside your house so like that's another giant reality is yeah. that you there's, have to dispose of your trash and it is it's an inconvenience it is a big and no one come and gets yeah. comes and get that like when you're in a house you have to take it someplace yeah. okay so just be aware these things and these things compile we're not even remotely done yeah <laughs> it just it just it makes you realize how convenient it was to live on the grid when you're living off the grid. Very. It sounds like this big, amazing thing. Oh yeah, we're gonna live off grid, you know, be, and be free, but it's it's very inconvenient. Very. <laughs> uh, fuel, now we've kind of touched on that with propane and stuff, but like we have a diesel heater and we actually have it uh, plumbed, the gas part coming out of our, our main diesel tank, but it's still using diesel and so you know you're now you're you have to fuel your house you have to get fuel for your diesel heaters or maybe it's fuel for a wood stove or you know or whatever you're using to heat your house or drive your house that is a cost that is something that's being used up that's something that you're going to have to be uh on top of because if you run out of fuel for your diesel heater if that's what you're heating your house with you're going to have a cold day or cold morning then you're driving your house to go get some fuel so they, you yeah. know so just another reality and a lot of people um like to be like all electric so there's just like a single you know utility going on but that's even less convenient it helps you to have backup like we said where we have propane and we can still cook regardless of what right. the rest of our power usage has and has been. even with us if we have a cloudy day I got to go get fuel for the generator it runs right. on gas yeah and you know and it and it uses about a gallon a day and so we have about four gallons of gas but if it if it's an extended period of time you have to have power you yeah. know if you think you're just going to go through life and be oh, I just use solar sorry that's <laughs> not the reality the mm -hmm. reality is that you're going to need like having a backup power source is huge and you're going to run that generator and you might run it for three or four days in a row yeah. just to make sure your refrigerator stays on so your food doesn't go bad right. or things like that so you know that's just another thing where I'm running in a town I'm gonna have to go get some gas I'll be right back 
Take the trash while you go. Exactly. Take the trash <laughs> with you. And that's the stuff. You just start to like learn these things. But the reality is, is that your utilities that you have taken for granted in your house are something that's big pain in the butt upon yourself <laughs> to deal with all the time and you yeah. will be thinking about this stuff every single day is the trash full i'm going into town to get some food i need to take the trash with me oh yeah. i gotta get some gas oh maybe we should just go fuel up right now yeah. you know oh god i gotta cut wood today like there are so many things that you have to think about now that we're in the bus it's become more and more routine but it's not but there's still failures all the time where we're like, oh my gosh, we, you know, like we need this or we need that. Absolutely. At the last oh my God. Second. Our black tank is totally full. Yeah. Like we Jesus, have to we go dump We got to go now. dump today. Exactly. Tomorrow, you know, or exactly. tomorrow morning we got to get up and go dump. Yeah. Out. And we weren't planning on leaving this space yet. Right. But you know, and that, but to. that is hundred percent the reality of living this way. Right. Just in the utility por portion. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the anxieties that are created living this way because it kind of branches off of some of the things we've already talked about, you know, because y because your utilities are upon you, you get anxieties. But more so than just things like that is things like driving your home. The idea of your home breaking down on in some remote location out in the dirt. And what are you going to do? Do you have some kind of fallback plan? You know, you just moved out of your sticks and bricks home. And now you're living in your home. And it drives and your home just broke down. Where are you going to live? What are you going to do? How are you going to fix your home? Can you afford to fix your home? You know, where are you going to live while your home's getting fixed? Exactly. Even if you have towing, now where are you going to go? And yeah. how much is that going to cost you? Exactly. And then, you know, what if there's an accident and your home's destroyed? Like, these are strange anxieties. And so even more so, while you're driving, your home is making noises that your car will never make. <laughs> A door slamming, drawers, drawers are opening, opening and, and closing. shutting. Your, yeah, like things are falling over. Yeah, things are falling off a shelf. Is rattling. Something that <laughs> fell off a shelf that never fell off the shelf before. Just did. And well, now you got to no add reason. that to the list yeah. of things to secure when you're moving. Right. All these things like, like will just bring your anxiety up and up and up, and they compound as the longer yeah. the trip. And then, like your favorite story is as when you're already stressed out about all these sounds and things that are happening, and then someone drives by you honking the horn, beep, 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 and you're, my you're like, oh my God, am I on fire now? You know, and they're just over there going, yeah, Hi. nice bus, you know? But you're, you're already up here, you know, because of all the things. Now, this slowly goes away, but there's certain anxieties of like breaking down, you know, something happening that you're not going to be able to fix on the road, mm -hmm. things like that. That stuff will be, be a constant. And if you're already an anxious person, like this is going to add to that significantly. It's just going to escalate it. Because I, I am not a person. I have zero anxiety yeah. until I moved into the bus I say and that, discovered these anxieties. Yeah, we were watching other people's videos where other guys that were driving their bus were really, I, I can't remember who it was, but somebody was actually like, they were quitting bus life and moving out of their bus because he was having such bad anxiety around the driving and everything. And Mike was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe anybody's anxiety I totally would get be it now. that bad. I, I'm, I eat crow now on this one when I think yeah. about it because it was me saying that, pfft, whatever until i got in the bus and i'm driving all the time and yeah. like carrie would pick up on it even before we leave because the days we move my anxiety's ramping up i'm a little short with it's her. all wound up you know i just want to get it going and get on the road and get through it and be done with it because right. i just don't like it and so um yeah plan for that because it's coming if you haven't moved into your bus already these are things are going to be like you're going to be surprised by them because it's not all roses all the time. It's not all like, oh my God, I'm just in this beautiful place. I can't wait to get on the road. And then you get there on the road and you're like, cool boy, like this is hard. The and, whole and that on the, driving thing, I don't yeah. like to drive. The, the whole boat. on the road part of this is literally the hardest part of this lifestyle. Once you get to a great location and you're parked there, that's when it's all fun. But all that sure. driving and moving and utilities and all that stuff in between is... yeah. It's and then the, that, that we could just segue right into finding locations to park because this is part of your anxiety. Right. You are literally oh my gosh. like, you know, you might do all the research in the world. You've looked at iOverlander. iOverlander is like, oh, this is a great spot. Big rig friendly. Tons You're like, of cell okay, phone I service. know where we're going to park. This is where we're going. Mm -hmm. Then you get there 
and your rig doesn't fit, or the the road conditions are changed. There's or, like a dip, or there's somebody of, there to get into yeah. it, and the or, bus can't go through yeah. that. Oh well, yeah, or it's whatever. just too big of your wheelbase is too big to get through this. Or, or the whole thing is a giant mud puddle. Yeah, like, you like just there are so many know. things, and all of a sudden you're in a place you don't know. This is the place that you've located to go to, and you can't park there. Now you have to find a new place to park. Maybe for the night. Yeah, and it might know. not be close. You might have to drive for another hour or something to even right. find another place. Exactly. To park. You may not be near a Walmart or a Cracker Barrel or right. someplace like that. So now you're just like, what are you going to do? That is a huge anxiety. It really is a big one. And so even if you do your research, you might get to that place and you can't park there. And now you're faced with, like, what are we going to do? You know, you can't just park on the side of the road. You're going to get door knocked 100% by a cop. Right. You know, and you can't and park. And have to move again. Yeah, you know, you're, you can't <laughs> just park in some random parking lot. You're going to get door knocked, for sure. Yeah. You know, you might be in a city like we are now, which I'm not going to say. Nice try. Um, that doesn't allow parking on the roads. It's illegal to sleep in your vehicle in this city. Yeah. Even though the city has a massive homeless population. What are you going to do? So, just keep that in mind. These are realities. Of bus life uh, yeah it might be size limitations time limitations you know some places allow 14 days some places only three days three days you just drove 1200 miles to park in a place for three days that doesn't even is not even realistic yeah but here you are or you get there and it's all filled up there's nowhere left nowhere for to, you park. to park cancel reservation yeah whatever there's so many things so finding a place to park is a huge anxiety that you'll run into in living this lifestyle once you're there and you and you can stay for two weeks, no problem. You won't even be thinking about it. But as those last couple days before you have to leave, it enters your mind. <laughs> Getting back to, we got to deal with our utilities. We've got to find a place to go. We have to drive. We have to find a you know that place to park. Hopefully, there's a place yeah. to park there. It's busy this time of year. God, is it going to be too cold? And not only do like, we need to dump and fill <laughs> and get gas, but we need to stop somewhere and do laundry too, like and grocery shopping. And there's always another thing and another thing and another mm-hmm. thing that was not that inconvenient in your home life, but it feels very inconvenient now in your yeah. traveling hectic bus yeah. life. You're going to a grocery store you've never been to before. And you can't find you anything can't find anything you're looking for. You know, you can't like make you. You'll go through it. You'll get through it, but it's not like that familiar grocery store where you yeah. knew where the where what side of the store the milk was on and and yeah. where the cereal is and whatever you're gonna get. You know, it's all those things compound. You have, you know, like we say, doing laundry. This gets back to utilities. Here we are. We have a washing machine in the bus. You think how convenient, except it uses like 20 gallons, 15, 20 gallons of water every time, and so that uses up our water. So do you want to move your bus? to go get water or just take your laundry and go do it and be done with it. Right. When you have to do five loads, that's all your water in your bus. Yeah. What are you going to do? We find we just go to the laundry mat. It's more convenient. More, yeah, more recently. We used to use the washing machine and then still go to the laundry mat just to dry it really quick. But now we're just like, let's just do it. Let's just there. do Yeah, because it's more convenient. But then you have to find a laundry mat someplace. Is it a good one or do they have crappy machines? Like all these yeah, things. Yeah, and if we're in the bus, is there going to be a place to park the bus nearby to then walk over and do the laundry? Oh exactly. my gosh. Or are we going to have to unhitch the car again? Or yeah. There's so many Anxieties. things. Anxieties. They're real. <laughs> you will experience them living this life because it's not a bed of roses. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess we can get to routine vehicle maintenance. Like, And this is something that's on me. Check your oil. Check your water. Check your fluids. Check all your fluids. You know, make sure everything works. Do your pre-flight checklist before you move. Um, If your air brakes, do your air brake check. Go online, look up how to do an air brake check, and make sure you're passing your air brake check. You're you're going to be in between twenty and thirty thousand pounds probably, and that it takes a long time to stop that. You need to make sure you can stop. You need to check your brake pads, make sure they're thick enough, make sure there's no cracks in your in your brake drums. These are things that you probably didn't think of, but here you are. Getting, getting into bus life and now these are things you better learn how to do or you're just going to have a bad time bus lifing okay <laughs> or you're going to kill your vehicle and possibly somebody else and your family or something so yeah, that's these are good. big things and they you know uh they add to your anxieties i'm telling you all of them do I think there's also um, realities to what you're experiencing in your environment at any given time too 
like the weather, the temperatures, are you able to go outside and do the things you planned to do while you were at that location? Or is it pouring rain and windy and icy cold and now you're stuck in the bus and do you have something to do while you're stuck in the bus? Right. For instance, like, you know, we have 40 feet of bus and it, and it is quite a bit more comfortable and we built it to be very comfortable. Right. And so when we have inclement weather, it still sucks that you can't go out and play for sure. And so you're, you're, you're stuck in the house and it may be for several days, you know, right. the, the weather might be terrible. Mm -hmm. And unlike, um, unlike us, you might be living in a van and now you might be inside a very small space for, for days on end. And so while the pictures you see on social media that may show this beautiful life where the, they look out, so they're sitting at their drinking their coffee, looking out the window or reading a book in bed and stuff like that, you do that for five minutes, man. And some of them are just done for pictures. They, this is not the life these people are living. <laughs> and the reality is, is when it rains for several days and you are, you get island fever inside, stuck inside your vehicle, not being able to go outside, not doing the things you planned on doing when you got there. You know, your the days that you can stay there are ticking by mm -hmm. and you can't, you know, you don't get to go have the fun that it, it's beckoning you except it's 20 degrees yeah or it's beckoning you except it's pouring rain or it's 105 or, it's or 100, whatever yeah, you, know? you know so these these things matter and then your bus itself is affected by this when it's 20 degrees outside you're running that heater non-stop oh my gosh. you know now you're thinking yeah. about fuel or if you have a propane fired heater you're screwed man because you're gonna have to go down and fill that thing every day right you know um, if you have a wood stove you know, you're going to be cutting wood, but now your wood's wet because it's pouring rain. So you're not going to be able to cut wood because that's not going to work in the wood stove. So like, this is real. And there's just all these issues that are so much more difficult than when you lived at home in a house. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that's not to say don't do this lifestyle. It's, we're just trying to say, this is probably what you need to be prepared for. And I think this is a big reason why you see so many people quitting bus life or quitting van life because they weren't prepared for the realities. They thought it was going to be all sunshine and roses like they saw on Instasham. But the realities are m much different. They're really, really, really. So, um, yeah. Okay, next point, hygiene. You are not going to... Hygiene! <laughs> You're not taking a shower every day. You're not. Forget about those everyday 20 minute showers. If you are a person that needs a shower every day, then this is you need not to, the life for you. You need a boondock in a city near Planet Fitness. Okay. Yeah. And even then that's going to be a hardship. And that, okay? you know, and that's a strong point you make is you might think, oh, I don't need a shower in my rig because I'm just going to go to Planet Fitness and shower. Well, when you're in developed areas, that might be great. But when you're kind of out in the Midwest, all these Western states, you might be out in the middle of nowhere and there's not a Planet Fitness for hours and hours around. And so, so. you're going to be doing like, you know, using baby wipes to clean up and clean the the important areas and to make sure you don't stink <laughs> okay and like that's a reality you're just if you're showering every day then prepare to go fill your fill your water every other day every two or three you know three or four <laughs> days depending on the amount of water if you have a 40 gallon you're going to be taking really really fast showers yeah there's no luxurious showers in the bus yeah. life unless you're if you pull into place and you have hookups and you have built your bus to use those hookups you know, and you don't have a six gallon water heater, you have an on demand water heater and so on. There's so many things that are like so much different unless you prepare for it, which you can then like make it a little bit better. But still, the amount of water you have matters in how long your showers are going to be and how often you're going to be using your shower. So uh, keep that in mind. It's not going to be those luxurious showers anymore. Long, hot, steamy. The, ba the bathroom nope. doesn't get all steamed up. Ever. There's no time for that. Nope, no time. <laughs> so. And and you miss it. I, it took me a while. It took me months and months to miss it, but I do. I, I feel like I've been camping for long enough now. So I feel like I'm starting to understand why people 
quit bus life or why they say things like we just needed a break from bus life so we're at this airbnb blah 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 mm. blah i couldn't understand why they were doing that before i would be like but they have a bus i thought bus life was supposed to be great well most of the time it is but not all the time right for me like i always take quick showers anyway so like going in and taking a luxurious shower for me is not something i would not normally do deal. um the size of my shower is tiny you know, that's inconvenient because we've made a small shower so we could have more room for other things. And we knew we were going to be in our shower for very short periods of time. So why did it need to be a big, luxurious shower if you're going to be taking the fastest shower you could yes, possibly take anyway? Exactly. You know, so, but still, like, there are inconveniences like that. You know, you're just, it's, you're not going to be taking long, hot showers, you know, for comfort and bubble baths. Forget it. <laughs> if, you have, if, you, if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to put a bath in mine, it's going to be so awesome. Oh, I know, like the big metal, like horse water trough It takes 40 thingies. gallons you're, just to get it deep enough for yeah. you to appreciate it. You're going to be it. sitting in like one inch of water freezing cold. Yeah, if you're putting a big giant water trough uh, bathtub and you're thinking you're going to take these big long bubble baths and stuff, you happen. will use 50 gallons of water to fill that up to that luxurious yeah. level. I mean, maybe if you're hooked up, yeah, but if not you're if you're up, boondocking. Yeah. And so, and that's probably an, another big point to talk about is the difference between boondocking for free or having to pay somewhere and how much that adds up day after day, week after mm -hmm. week, month after month, whereas boondocking for free was so nice not having that right. rent basically. We have been in two places now where we have paid, well, three places, three places in the entire time uh, living in the bus that we had to pay for. The first place was in Colorado because there was just zero boondocking near her grandchild. And so that cost us $70 a night, but it had full hookups. That was really nice. Uh, the second place was when it got really, really, really hot in Arizona. I was still working there and we stayed there for two months straight while I was finishing up uh, my job there. And that was actually extremely cheap with full hookups. It was $300 a month. Yeah. So that was extremely. But we cheap. had to have it because the temperatures were so high. It was yeah. over 100 degrees outside Every day. all the time, and we had to have air conditioning. So we had to be right. somewhere that we could plug in. And unless the entire top of your bus is solar panels, You're you will not have to do AC. the same thing. You will not be running your AC off your solar. Yeah. It's just not feasible. Having a mini split is great for when you are plugged in. But if you if, if we have to use it now, if we have to use yeah. it and we're boondocking on an uncommonly hot day, we try to drive away from places like that. But if it does get super duper hot and we're going to be there, then we're going to have to run the generator to run our yeah, air conditioning. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Okay. Um, so then the next one, and I think the final point, but the, probably the one that's never, ever, ever touched upon is actually the psychology of bus life. You are being misled by social media most of the time as to how wonderful bus life and stuff is because they don't show you the downsides very often. They show you the vistas and they show you them holding hands, walking on a beach and they show you um, all the fun and adventure, beautiful and sunsets yeah. that they're experiencing up on their deck, drinking wine. These photographs are created. Most of the photographs you see of ours on Instagram are really idealizing the life that we're living we are taking and showing you the best parts of our life living in a bus. We are not showing you all the things that we're talking about. Nobody picks up the camera when things are bad and it's not on purpose. It's not like we're thinking, oh my gosh, this is bad. Don't get the camera. We don't want to show. That's not it. It's just when bad things start happening. We're dealing with it. Yeah, you, you just get reactive to the situation and you totally forget to ever pick up the camera. I mean, there's been so many things that have happened that later on we're like, oh, duh, why didn't we pick up the camera when that was happening and you just right. don't think of it. So you just, you're being misled by social media as to like, this is such an easy, wonderful life because yeah. you are trading conveniences for those photographs. <laughs> you really are. Yes. You're trading so much convenience so you can be in that place at that moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you're roughing it. You're freaking camping the whole time. Right. You're living with a compost toilet, composting toilet. It, it feels more like camping to me it, it is yeah very much it really does it's know? very glamorous camping it's you know it's, yeah. it's not bad as far as camping goes but for me personally after camping for a year and a half i'm like i kind of feel all camped out like i 
I, I understand now why people long to just go back to mm. a site bu built house right. that doesn't get so cold at night and has a furnace to keep it the temperature you want anyway and all those things mm. that we just don't have in a bus. Yeah, and it, that is very location specific. If you're in a wonderful, wonderful place, you are not thinking about the inconveniences that the bus is That's presenting. That's true, too. If, it's, if the temperature outside is 70 degrees at night and maybe 80 during the day, yeah. like your bus will remain a very and, comfortable, wonderful temperature yeah, and it and, won't matter. And you're on the beach and you're fishing and you're finding seashells. Like that's the best of the best. That is, that's what you want bus life for, van yeah. life or whatever Yeah, and so all is. those inconveniences become less noticeable. But when you're in a place like where it's cold and then all those little things or whatever bothers you, yeah. all those things that you have to do are even harder. Right. And right. like tedious. Yeah. And you're like, oh, and a bigger God. deal. And you're just like, hey, yeah, like I got I have to drive 40 <laughs> miles to town to throw this thing of trash yeah. away. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's very location specific. And so this kind of gets into the next point of um, it's not, a life-changing experience it can be a life-changing experience it is a location changing experience yeah it's a life-changing experience if you are able to change who you are in these locations um, you will you'll probably become a harder person in the sense of dealing with all the uh, sp specific things that have to be dealt with all the time getting back to utilities and your environment and stuff like that you will become harder if you're able to adapt to that but that doesn't necessarily mean that if you were a, uh, you sat on the couch all the time and played video games, if you think that you're just going to get into your vehicle and not do that. Yeah, like, you're like, oh yeah, when once I'm living in my whatever it is, I'm going to eat better and I'm going to exercise every day and I'm going to do yoga up on the deck and you know, you idealize all these things. That's not going to happen unless you make it happen. Yeah. These things don't auto, you don't automatically change into this other person because you live in the bus. You bring all your habits with you. Mm -hmm. You bring all your depression with you. You bring your anxiety with you. All those things come with you. Mm -hmm. And okay. some of them get magnified yeah. in this environment. I was just going to say that. This, oh. this will absolutely <laughs> magnify the things about your life that might be affected greatly by living in a vehicle. So don't think that just because you moved in your vehicle, your life's going to change because it doesn't. What's going to change is your location is going to change a lot. But you will still be the same person when you get here. And so you have to be aware of that coming into this. This isn't going to change you in the ways you might think it's going to change you. Yeah. Your yeah. environment will change, but you will be the same person. And right. how you deal with your environmentals may change you. But if you weren't a fisherman going into this you're probably not going to be a fisherman coming out of this unless you go buy a fishing pole and start fishing see you have to change who you are it's this isn't going to change you that's really important that you know this you just it's not going to change who you are you will still be the same person and you're going to bring your baggage with you okay so um and then one more thing to talk about is boredom even though you live in a really neat place, if you don't have the tools that you need, and I say tools, it might be that fishing pole we were talking about. It might be like uh, a parachute, <laughs> whatever your thing is. <clears throat> if you don't have the tools to have fun in that location, you won't. You know, maybe if your thing is sitting outside in a chair reading a book on the, on the seashore, this is perfect for you right? because and <laughs> maybe you just easy. like to read. Maybe your thing is reading. And so no matter where you go, you can sit in that beautiful place that you've taken yourself to and read. And maybe that's your thing. But if it's not, if your thing is your like me, I have like I go to places and have a mission when I get there. And so or find that mission when I get there. Create a mission when yeah, you get he yeah. has to have a mission at all times. I, I, I'm not that guy that wants to sit in a chair He's, and read. There are some words that we would never use to describe Mike, like chill, 
you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> laid back. Lay relax. Rela- no, these are not Mike Guyver words. Mike wants to be out doing and conquering and yeah. having all the fun. <laughs> exactly. So, in the absence of the tools you need or being in a place or if it's raining or things like that, you... If you get bored easily, you will get bored to death in this life. And in a small little yes, home I'm telling where you right you now, just go do that some big project. There's not always something to do, and so you have to create your reality, or else you will get bored doing this. Just sitting in your bus or van or car or whatever it is you have chosen this lifestyle to be, RV. Um, it, it is very easy to realize that you don't have all the things that you had packed away in the closets in your house, yeah. in your bus. And therefore, you can find yourself being being very bored very quickly in this lifestyle. So, Or if you're Mike, you can find yourself online ordering the things you need to not be bored in this lifestyle. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway... I want to leave you guys with a positive. I don't want to leave you guys thinking this is horrible. And I will tell you, right now, I'm looking out the window at the ocean. And it is beautiful. And I could go out and go fishing right now. There are so many things we could do. And it is. There are so many wonderful things that we have experienced in this. And I love it. Mm -hmm. I love the mm-hmm. things that we get to do yeah. and you just have to know that it's not all the highs but it's not all lows either it's just like normal life you're going to have ups and downs but you're going to have a little bit more to do yes this life is harder yeah this life is significantly and harder than living in a house but some of the rewards coming from this are significantly better than living in a house right so these are just things we wanted to just give you some of these realities because they're so important you got to know yeah and so i hope we guys haven't scared you guys away from this <laughs> <laughs> but uh at the same time i think it's just important so anyway yeah and if you guys have like questions or comments about this like put, put it in the comments below and we can have like a kind of a yeah. You know, keep the discussion going about stuff like this. Maybe there's some points that we didn't bring up that we should have. So Right. And if you like this video, click that like button for us. It helps us. And uh, if you like what we're talking about, we have an entire build series online, like how we built this bus and everything else is all online. And so hit that subscription button. Go back through and check out what we've done. We and post where we've been. Where we've been <laughs> and where we're going. And we post a video every Thursday. So... I think this is it. We'll see you guys next Thursday. Thanks for watching, you guys. Thank you, guys. See Bye you next week. I'm about to lose my little mind, but that's okay. Yeah, we just I'm hooked okay. back up again. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just going to lose my little mind. Thank you. Of course. Have a good day. Bye now. You've got to be freaking kidding me. Okay. Now she's recommending that we go unhook. Are you filming this? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs>